Before we begin, please make sure to watch the first part of this video. You can find the link in the description. Welcome everyone to the channel. Many of you probably remember this. Monster, this is a programmable stabilizer. 4 voltage and current up to 60 volts, 20 amps. This is the most advanced and powerful power supply you can buy without any issues. You can find the link in the description. The maximum power is a whole 1200 watts. Just imagine a laboratory power supply with all the bells and whistles at 1200 watts. But to power this beast, you need an equally beastly power source. These modules come in various power levels. My version is the most powerful at the moment, but it costs over $70, though I personally recommend it. As an alternative, you can use a network transformer. For example, here's a pair of transformers with a total power of about 800W. The weight is also quite significant, and here's a switching power supply. Its power is also 800W. Now compare the sizes. And as for the weight, I won't even mention it. Yes, friends, I assembled this power supply for a Chinese stabilizer. Many of you might remember that I previously made a power source for it, and it seems like I even put everything together, almost getting a ready-made lab power supply. But I didn't quite like that power supply because it lacked galvanic isolation between the control circuit and the high voltage part. And this option is exactly what I need. In the last video, we looked at the circuit, its features, transformer windings, and much more. Today, we'll talk about the first power-up, tuning, and, of course, we'll measure the power output. It's been over a month since the first part was published, and I've received many questions that I'll try to answer today. Let me remind you that you can find the link to the full archive with the schematics and boards, as well as the link to the forum thread where the circuit was originally presented, in the description. The first question was related to protection. When the power supply unit is first connected to the network, the protection might activate because the outputs are being charged at that moment. The electrolytic capacitors and their charging current is very high. Although the process lasts only fractions of a second, the trigger protection is quite fast and reacts to the sudden increase in current, shutting down the generator. The protection is reset in a simple way by adding a button to the specified part of the circuit. In the initial state, the button is closed. To reset the protection, the button is opened for a second, then closed again to reactivate the protection. Before assembly, it is necessary to check all components for functionality, even if they are brand new. I highly recommend using it. Transistor tester, you will also find the link in the description. Before starting the power supply unit, thoroughly check the board to ensure all components are in their places. There are no solder bridges caused by careless soldering. Next, clean the board with alcohol, and it seems everything is ready for launch. The first start of the circuit is done through a limiting lamp with a power of 40 to 100 watts, which is connected in series with one of the power wires or in place of the fuse. In this case, with the safety lamp, the trigger protection will not activate as the lamp limits the current, ensuring a smooth start of the circuit. Next, use a multimeter to check the output voltage. If it is present, then the unit is functioning. During operation without load, the filament of the limiting lamp should not light up. Illumination indicates a problem, which is primarily related to through currents through the transistors. The moment of truth. Connecting the unit directly to the network. Ideally, the power supply should be started through a variac, but not everyone has one. I think many radio enthusiasts have a phobia, which is the fear of the power supply exploding on the first turn on. Even if the unit has passed all initial tests, we are still afraid to connect it to the network and always slightly with our hand. We cover our eyes in anticipation of an explosion. While operating from the network, the unit should not make any extraneous noises. What to do if the unit does not start? First of all, be extremely careful, as we will be working with high voltage. Everything is done with a connected safety lamp. First, check for a constant voltage of 300 to 310 V on the high voltage capacitors. At this point, switch the multimeter to the DC voltage measurement mode up to 1000 V. 
If it is absent, check the fuse. If it is intact, then the problem is most likely in the diode rectifier. If there is voltage on the capacitors, then de-older one of the wires of the voltage stabilization unit. And let's move on. First, check the voltage at the output of the 7812 linear regulator. It should be around 12 volts. During the tests, there should be no load on the power supply output. At this stage, having an oscilloscope is highly recommended. You can find a link to my sample in the description. By checking the signal on the control windings, you can ensure that the oscillator is working properly. If you don't have an oscilloscope on hand, no worries, there's another way to check. Take a 12 volt incandescent lamp. The lower the wattage, the better. Connect the lamp alternately to the secondary windings of the matching transformer. In the case of both windings, the lamp should light up with the same brightness. This indicates that the generator is functioning normally. During this test, the power supply is disconnected from the 220 volt network. The power is 12. Volts for the generator's operation are supplied from an external source. In my case, from a laboratory power supply. I highly recommend also desoldering and checking the field effect transistors. If they are in good condition, solder them back in. Problems in the secondary circuit cannot be the reason for the unit not starting. Therefore, the issue needs to be looked for specifically at the input and in the control circuit. In any case, the specified method will help identify the malfunction. Regarding the tests, the previously mentioned 1200W Chinese stabilizer is connected to the power source. I'll say right away, I removed the voltage stabilization on the power supply. It was originally designed here to stabilize the voltage at 55V. Since the ZXY6020 module is rated for an input voltage of 60 volts. In short, to prevent the stabilizer board from burning out. But later tests showed that the Chinese module safely operates at an input voltage up to 65 volts. I didn't dare to test beyond that. But just in case, I connected a load resistor to the power supply output to slightly reduce the maximum voltage on the capacitor. As a result, without stabilization, the output voltage of the power supply was about 60. That's During the tests, our load will be three incandescent lamps connected in series from a film projector. Each of these lamps is 30 volts 400 watts. This is not the best option, as initially, in a cold state, the filament of such lamps has very low resistance. Not every switching power supply is capable of powering such lamps. At the moment of startup, they have huge inrush currents, so the Chinese stabilizer goes into stabilization mode of current, realizing at the moment that at the output, it's almost a short circuit. I selected several power ranges and each time left the unit for 30 seconds, checking the heating. Then, I increased the power. The extreme point was a power of 570 watts. Pay attention to the output voltage of 57 volts. At the input of the power supply, we have about 60 volts. So with a load of almost 600 watts, the output voltage drops by only about 3 volts. This is a good indicator considering the efficiency. Stabilizer boards. The maximum calculated power of the power source is about 800 watts. I could have taken the risk and pulled all 800 watts, but my system doesn't have active cooling. The unit operated at this power for about a minute, after which the lamp started to slowly scorch the table. Essentially, they are nothing more than a half kilowatt heater. Personally, I consider them successful. The unit is performing excellently, and we will soon be putting it to use. The only drawback of the circuit is the absence of a delay or soft start feature. Yes, there are thermistors at the input, but they are not the best option for a power supply of this capacity. As a result, the trigger protection activates during the initial power-up when the capacitors charge. Therefore, after turning on the unit, I had to disable the protection and then turn it back on. But that's a minor issue. If desired, a soft start can be added here. Friends, I think that's all for now. I remind you that all the source files for this project, links to purchase components for assembly, as well as links to ready-made power supplies of this type can be found in the description. Please rate this video with a like and share it with your friends on social media. This really helps the channel and contributes to the release of new videos. And with that, I have to say goodbye.
Well, as always, it was Kazian K with you. And until we meet again. Bye.